Hey guys, welcome to episode 372 of the official podcast. It's still here, it's still going. Andrew's here. Hey, Andrew. Yep. Hey, man. How's it going? Good. Uh, well, Z, we have no video proof of it. Yeah, why, why don't you have video on? Huh? Oh, no. They're calling me out. Oh, boy. Uh, my camera's not connecting right now. It's on and. And he's AI. We're not just using a soundboard or anything like that. You are actually here. Say something only Andrew would know. Um, the main protagonist of Mad Max, his name is Max. Hmm. That's yeah. right. good enough. It checks out. It's like I a little Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's his legal name. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought it's Furiosa. I'm I'm just running pure audio today. I'm I'm respecting the viewers who don't watch on YouTube, who just listen on the audio platforms. Oh, you're this team you. audio. <sighs> nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm team audio this week. Sorry. A real saint. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Whoever whoever's editing this episode, put my uh, my little thing in the corner. It's just a black box. Just no no picture, no freeze frame, nothing. Just out of respect the, for all the audio listeners. Just the empty void. Yeah, for this episode, don't give anyone the pleasure of seeing my handsome face. Just leave everyone in the dark. Just put advertising. We, we used to have a SoundCloud, but then I deleted it about six years Why? in. Why? Because it was, it was like not getting the uh, same traction as all the other places. I wanted to divert people onto other audio platforms. But yeah. Aww. SoundCloud's mainly just for like music. Yeah. Yeah, that's Nothing true. Else. Yeah, that kind of fizzled true. out. Yeah. The only thing I see SoundCloud really used for these days is when you have artists doing covers and remixes that get like copyright claimed on Spotify or mm, YouTube. Yeah. So they just put it on mm -hmm. SoundCloud. Yeah, that's for it. Sure. Who owns SoundCloud? Uh, um, that's a great question. Probably, yeah, we'll it's, I mean, it's probably just like a bunch of investment companies, right? It's a yeah, it's a privately held company. Oh, I thought it was like Microsoft or something. No, it just says it's a privately held company. Mm -hmm. SoundCloud Limited is the owner. Hmm. Yeah. So they're their own boss. Yeah, I guess. Well, good luck. <laughs> Try hard. Yeah. Yeah. When's the buyout coming? <laughs> no, Not anytime soon. Are they going down? Mm. Now that we're off their platform, <laughs> that was the nail in the coffin. Do you think that like sent alarm bells ringing at their head offices? They're like, no, the official podcast. I mean, you don't really, you don't really hear anything about SoundCloud ever, do you? Yeah, no, it's like I think mumble rappers use it as like a jumping off point. You get like SoundCloud, SoundCloud rap, rapper, yeah. yeah, and then but then they like mm -hmm. move to other <laughs> other platforms like you know Spotify and stuff, YouTube. Once well, they get an audience, if you think about it, the goal. The goal of any musician on SoundCloud is to get off of SoundCloud <laughs> and have their music on Spotify or the radio or big on YouTube or wherever. You know, SoundCloud is never, never going to be the avenue for huge success as a musician. Was that the same for YouTube originally? Though? Like, SoundCloud. You wanted to get big on YouTube so then you could like, I don't know, go, go on network TV or something, get a network show. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I remember Ray William Johnson when he was the biggest channel out there. He he left because he wanted to pursue things outside of yeah. like being a YouTuber. Yeah. What was the first transitional phase to modern current high production YouTube, Charlie? Where like you saw a shift in the level of quality Philip on the DeFranco, website? Maybe? No, 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 no. Like he's talking about like really high quality productions. That's got to be Freddie Wong. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that would probably be it. You're probably right. Yeah, Freddie Wong really revolutionized it. Oh, unironically, maybe Rooster, maybe actually Rooster Teeth. We gag on and joke. Rooster about Teeth as well. Rooster Teeth for for Machinima, I would say, yeah, for like computer animated and fan animation. No, they did a lot of yeah. live action okay, stuff. You guys are all wrong. Oh, oh, oh! You mean you mean like at the studio level, like how much they yeah. did and all the? Oh, yeah, I, I, I get what you're they saying. They did movies, yeah. remember? Like a uh, rocket. Yeah, they even had that whole show that. Uh, rocket jump i think it was or not rocket jump that was rocket jump was freddy one yeah that's ready it, they did the uh the laser one yeah like laser, la team. laser masters laser squad, or something laser team. laser team yeah oh yeah it wasn't very good it was like a full movie that like premiered no. at cinemas 
Yeah, see, that's that's where I'm probably forgetting this stuff, because that was still the era when ever YouTube channels tried to make that kind of stuff. It was just always bad. Like, people would watch it and like it, but it was never, you know, memorable or good, you know? Yeah. 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 I have a but, better answer. I think YouTube went pro when some YouTuber commissioned has been Hotel Erotica fanfic, which mm, I think Andrew Madrid. wants mm. to tell us about. All right. Oh, I me? I could do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Or okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a man. His name <laughs> is Verbal Ace. Yes. <laughs> this is the story of a man <laughs> named anyway. Named Verbal Ace, who you have probably, whether you're aware of it or not, seen his work around the internet. He created cartoon beatboxing, which is where the Thanos beatboxing meme comes from that was really, really huge for a long time. And lots of clips and pieces of his work floats around the internet. He got really, really great views on the series. Pretty self-explanatory. Cartoons beatbox at each other. That's the whole show. But it was very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point, he is having a lot of production issues. The show is kind of grinding to a halt. It's not releasing stuff. It's kind of going dark. And between one of his seasons of release, like season two and season three, let's say, I don't remember the exact ones, but there's a six-month gap between episodes. And it's kind of unexplained, and for his show, it's a long time. And then some messages start going around, some things start going around, where the reason that happened is he was working on an animation for the channel, and it turned too adult to be posted on his channel. So it kind of ate up his time, ate up what he was doing, he said, I, I can't put it on the channel, I just gotta move on. And that makes sense, what he normally puts on his channel is very family-friendly. Very, very family-friendly YouTuber image. So time goes by. Days pass, seasons change, and around, I think, September of last year, uh, someone uploads what he was working on to YouTube, and it turns out to be an animation <laughs> of his little animated avatar, the way he represents himself in these cartoons, these cartoon beatboxing <laughs> videos, being sexually pursued by the main character of Has Been Hotel, <laughs> which is a YouTube cartoon that is now actually on Amazon Prime, I think, as like a big full series. Yeah, it's massive. Yes. So his character, his little avatar, gets stalked basically by the main character yeah. of this Has Been yes. Hotel show, which is like a cutesy blonde clown character, I guess. I don't know what they're supposed to be or anything, but... She's a demon in hell. Good enough. He, he gets kidnapped into her sex lair and tied to a bed in this uh, video. Yes. The, in this a, uh, <laughs> news AMV, yeah. basically, that he commissions to have animated and he's strapped to the bed and they censored it, kind of, where they put smiley faces over his crotch. But still, the... Uh, Implication. They, they pretty... Yeah, they really went into the animation, too, with her dancing and trying to seduce yes. him. And he's sweating the whole time, like, oh, geez, what's happening? Am I about to get raped? <laughs> it is very, does, very clearly inappropriate for kids. They they went hard animating this. They really dove in Literally. Deep. Was it ever <laughs> intended for kids, though? What was this, like, for his own personal spank bank? According to what I've read, and who knows what is and isn't true... It was supposed to be an animation for the channel, but as he kept elaborating on it and writing more of it and getting more of it animated, it got too sexual for the channel. <laughs> so he just said, I can't post this. So why not just not make it sexual then? Like, if the intent... He couldn't help himself, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, He's too he desirable. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that goes up in about September, I think, October. I don't remember when. And it kind of just sits there. And it's just kind of there. And whatever. And then, about a week ago, someone on the internet makes a Twitter thread and goes, Hey folks, I don't know if you knew this, but here's why Verbal Ace's production went ground to a halt, and here's what happened, and here's the cartoon if you haven't seen it, and it's this fucking has-been hotel fan fiction of him getting fucked by a demon against his will and all this stuff. And then the bombshell drops, 
that this cartoon cost him fifty thousand dollars <laughs> and yeah. essentially bankrupted his entire YouTube channel, which is why not only did cartoon beatboxing take so long to get made, but now he's made videos asking people to donate to help save the show without <laughs> telling them this is what happened. He made a video in the interim basically explaining why his channel is dead in which he was blaming the YouTube algorithm and they make it really hard yes. for productions like animations where it takes a long time so the algorithm is just against it, which is true. I think a lot of animators yeah. got affected by Definitely. that back in the day. But he kind of left out the part where he just pissed away 50 grand on basically yeah. fanfic animation for himself. Yeah. It's also important we talk about the quality of the animation real quick. I think a lot of people are picturing a $50,000 animation to be like extraordinarily big and like high quality. From what I read, and I don't know if this is true, Andrew, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. From what sure. I read, the animation used a lot of tracing. So they cut a lot of mm. corners for the animation itself. So the guy kind of just got blatantly scammed. It's also a three minute animation <laughs> for this AMV that mm. it's a. Uh, you you'd expect a little more for the for the for price 50, point here. Holes, yeah. yeah. So yes yeah. and no. Yes and no. Um, I agree with you that you would expect oh, more because hard. there's so there's another rumor going around that it was animated by a single person. That's not at mm. all true. The, he he contracted a studio, a small indie animation studio made this. So it was a team of people. So yes, in you would expect it to be better. I, I could see that, but if you run the numbers on the length and the amount of frames and the frame rate that the cartoon runs at and all that stuff, he ended up paying about $9.50 per uh, second of animation, which in the animation mm, field, that's actually, that's actually kind of middle of the road in no, terms of pricing. Three minutes. Nine bucks per second does not add up to fifty grand. Or nine nine bucks for frame. I'm sorry, per frame, not oh, per second. Yeah. Per okay. frame of animation. Because I was gonna say, there's also a simultaneous drama going on around that show specifically, Has Been Hotel, where I think the animators are super, super, super mega pissed at the creators because yes. a document got leaked with the pay rates, and apparently the the official Has Been Hotel people, the people that actually run the show, they pay as little as thirty five bucks per second. Not frame per second. So if yeah. we went with that rate, this guy could have paid just 6,300 uh, bucks and gotten the same animation, I guess, yeah. according to my calculator. So he, they marked him up. He really did get butt fucked by this rate here that he paid. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he, you know. he paid, he paid like, <laughs> a, like a big budget industry standard rate. You know, like nine, mm -hmm. nine something dollars per frame if he was, I don't know, making a Netflix cartoon or. Or some level of something is uh, makes sense, and the, but the uh, the animation itself isn't like that level of quality where you would expect that kind of money. No, it, it's not. It's not like a professional quality animation that you would expect. I don't, at least not in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's very. It's just not bad or anything. It's pretty well done. But for fifty thousand dollars, it I think you'd expect it to be a little bit more. Right. What people are probably laughing at him the most though is there's all these technical details, and that's fine. But he is a big, big view YouTuber. He does get view, or at least before this, he got a lot of views, had a lot of success, a lot of momentum, big, giant audience. So 50 grand expense on a passion project, fine, totally fine. And yeah, the fact it's about probably his fetish, that's a little embarrassing. But where we should really be criticizing him and laughing at him is you don't bankrupt your channel doing this <laughs> you don't sink your business to make this i was having a look at his channel it's 5.5 million subscribers and the videos i guess they are really short but they usually get like at least before this drama like the actual beatbox videos or whatever they would get a few million hits so uh, yeah how does 500k uh 50k bankrupt him that's pretty so i think it is go ahead Sorry. I was just going to say, I think it's just because like the rate on them isn't that high because they're shorter videos yeah, would be my guess. That's... So maybe 50k, mm -hmm. it, maybe it takes a couple videos at that rate to get 50k. Yeah, maybe. So running the numbers off his social blade, before all of this, for consistent months, he would get about 20 million views, give or take. So conservative estimate, that would probably be about five or six months if he saved up to pay for this cartoon and really didn't have tons of other expenses, just really saved his money. Mm. But even then, you know, 
I mean, he might just independently have more money on the side or something. Who knows? True. Also true. Like who, yeah, who knows? Like sponsors who, or something. I need the money. Yeah. Sponsors, merch as well. Could be lots of places. Has he directly said that um, it has bankrupted him or is that kind of like an assumption on the audience's part? I think everybody's just joking. <laughs> No, 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 no. He made a video not long no? before this whole thing became widespread news asking fans to save the Oh, yeah, the yeah, show. yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah. But that's like what every YouTuber does. That doesn't mean he's actually poor. That's just like, give me money, True. subscribe to my Patreon or I'm going to starve. In terms of bankruptcy and actually like being destitute now, no, it, not anything said like that whatsoever. But in terms of him asking for funding for a show that I think was just running smoothly before this... Who knows? You know, could put those puzzle pieces together. Mm. Could be something. I mean, either way, a waste of money. Plus, he didn't even get the satisfaction of posting it himself anywhere. It was leaked. That by too. God knows who. Probably yeah. one of the people that he paid. So he he was gonna release it, just not on not on his like child friendly account. Was that the aim? That's what uh, I garnered I from so. reading stuff. So so who knows who's telling what and what is truthful and what is just kind of yeah. covering. But from what I garnered, the original intention was, oh, I'll make an animation for my channel about Hasbun Hotel. And then as it went on, it just got more sexual in tone. And he was like, I can't put this out there. <laughs> oh, you know, who knows if that's the real story or not. But I believe that's what he mentioned about it. Hmm. I think this is definitely goofy, but it's not as nearly as goofy as like people draw, uh, like commissioning like dragons, fucking cars, and their self inserts, and like. How is that not as goofy? They don't they don't destroy their whole business to have a dragon <laughs> fuck a Toyota. <laughs> they might. It's so much goofier here. That is absolutely why people are laughing. And if also, if he, yeah. I was going to say, Jackson, It's he doesn't even... There's no titties. There's no nudity. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing. Like, he, he commissioned softcore self-insert porn. <laughs> like, that's why I'm kind of, like, leaning on the side of maybe this is just, like, a misconstrued actual... Like, he was trying to make a video for his audience because there is, like, no nudity or, ex like, fully explicit sexual acts that you would expect from, like, fet like a fetish self-insert content right. thing. So I'm confused about that aspect, too. That's where that's where that part gets dubious to me, because if you're making this video and you're actively part of the production, you're going to have the team sending you roughs. Yeah. They're going to go, hey, here's a sketch of this scene. Here's a, a quick animatic of the scene. What do you think? Which means he had to look at those well before they were colored and inked and finished with animation and said, yep, looks good to me. You know, I'm looking at the screenshots from his discord. He was well, this was all intentional. He just didn't intend to put it on his main channel, he says in his mm. discord. He says, but I can't release it on my channel because of what happens. Nothing is seen, but it's definitely PG-13. The whole thing is a music video. I'd have to figure out what to do. It's definitely going to be on another channel that will be a music video-based channel. Okay, so... So fair enough, mm, I guess he just wanted to make a music video, yeah, it's but it's not, still so embarrassing. Yeah, it, it looks like, yeah. fetish, <laughs> like a fetish self-insert thing, but it probably isn't. It's the money that compounds it, man. If this just came out and he just admitted it, he was like, yeah, I wanted to make a fan fiction video, whatever. People would laugh at him, but it would go away. It would just be like, whatever. The fact that he spent 50k and then potentially ruined his channel and his production line and series for it, that's what people are mocking him for. That's what's going to stick around. Well, and also, it's just... It's just it's super goofy. It is goofy. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go the opposite way though, and mock him. If he was paying 50 grand, he should have gone all out. There should have been like full nudity everywhere. There should have been like way more explicit. Absolutely. True. 50 grand in his self insert doesn't even get his cock sucked. Yeah. What a waste. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, even at the rates where like so like I said there has been leaks from artists that have worked for that studio not studio but the people that make Hasbro hotel i guess and the highest i guess they would go is was like 60 bucks per second even then that's like 11 thousand i'm rounding up by the way this mm. guy got fucked by whoever worked for him well at least he, no artists are gonna complain about his working conditions if they if they got a yeah, i guess nice yeah paycheck. he didn't make them crunch or anything they took their time yeah, they, they got a nice little cash payday out of this. They got a little Probably pay paid pay. them maternal leave, insurance, vacation pay. Maybe they charged so much because he just constantly did like rewrites or something. Like would uh, like change, no. change the pitch constantly. More bondage. 
That'd be so silly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't censor my cock. Wait, censor it. Yeah, they just have to keep going back and forth. <laughs> Two inches longer. Yeah. One inch shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a bulge. Let's also look at the reputation hit that this has done to him. If you go to his channel now, uh, nearly all of his most recent videos, all the comments are being deleted. Like, they're not hidden, but they're getting almost none because he's very flagrantly just deleting comments, mentioning this and talking about uh, it. It's funny, but who, does this really, like, change people's opinion on the, his content itself? I don't know. That seems kind of insane to me. It's, like, it's goofy and it's funny, but... I mean, it was a poor decision on his part to bankrupt his company, but still, the co if the content's good, it doesn't really change my opinion on it. And plus, I had never heard of this guy until now, and I feel like probably a lot of people are in the same no, boat. No, me neither. Ever. I don't, I, I'm also in that same boat with Jackson. I don't know if, like, are there really going to be many fans who are like, oh, I can't believe you did this? Probably not. I feel like, I feel like it's just clowning on him yeah. for the silliness of it. I can't imagine yeah. people are like genuinely super mad or hurt that he commissioned yeah. this. Yeah, it's just Unless funny. maybe like they're super fans who are worried about the future of the brand or something. I don't know if they would give, like they gave uh, I should mention, by the way, so he, since he's obviously a gigantic has been hotel fan, uh, the creator of the series, Vivzy Pop, has apparently seen this whole drama and she reacted with a gift that says, laughing nervously, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's her yep. Also, did I mention that this entire thing came out on his birthday? <laughs> so happy birthday. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> it just gets what, who, juicier and who who leaked it? <laughs> like who hates him that much that they leaked it? Like he put all this time, he bankrupted his company and he doesn't even get the satisfaction of posting it first to whatever channel he wanted to post it to. It got leaked. That's kind of mean. <laughs> I know it's such a fuck you. It was I found the I found the info page. It was posted September 6th, 2023 on Hydrohater 99's YouTube channel, which I'm going to assume is a just a nobody. Um <laughs> did you get it? And then <laughs> and, and then the Twitter thread that actually made it viral went out about yeah, about a week ago. So it, it was sitting on the internet waiting to be found for months and months and months. Also, oh, surely this has been hotel uh, lead chick, v v Vivzy Pop or whatever, whoever it is. Surely uh, they have seen worse with their with their IP. There has to be a whole lot of like, oh, yeah. oh way worse. Up. I'm yeah. sure, but not, not yeah. this expensive, I imagine. Oh, expensive. Yeah, yeah not this from like a name brand YouTuber. Um, I've, I've met a couple people who work on on like big YouTube cartoons and stuff like that, very similar to has been, and they they send each other porn of it. You know, like they're all aware, <laughs> they all know. Yeah, I, sure. I feel like everyone knows. It's just one of those things where it's like fifty k. Are you serious? <laughs> I can't believe you would do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you you could have just asked me, and I'd, I'd draw something for you. I guess, like you know, it's too <laughs> it's too much. Yeah, definitely. Andrew, tell me about something that isn't too much, though. I need to I need to be brought back down to reality. Oh my goodness, Jackson. Okay, but only because you asked nicely. Jackson, do you want to get a better night's sleep oh, or please. a better body? Yeah, uh, I, both, but the, the sleep mm -hmm. first, please. Sleep first. Oh, shit. All right, sorry. Do you want a better night's sleep or a better internet connection? There we go. <laughs> sleep, oh. sleep first. May have, may have conflated who's on this week a little bit there. <laughs> uh, fine, I'll tell you about the better night's sleep. Helix Sleep is a mattress company and it's one that i can wholeheartedly firmly recommend that's a little bit of a mattress pun because mattresses can come in firm <laughs> and a helix sleep mattress can come in whatever style you need soft medium firm made for side back stomach tossing and turning sleeping whatever kind of sleeping you can think of whatever kind of comfort level you can think of. I mention this nearly every time we bring up Helix Sleep, and I'm going to keep mentioning it. I have one as a guest mattress for when people come over, and I set it up, and each and every person who has stayed with me has said it's just super duper comfy. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the honest truth with how conservatively I live. I don't have a bed frame for it. I just put it on the fucking ground. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before. It's the truth. I put it on the floor and I say, there you go. Sleep on it, you animal. And they do. 
and they they really do love it. It is that comfortable. You don't need any fancy stuff alongside it. The mattress itself is just amazing. I've also taken a nap or two on it. It's really, really good. And if you don't believe me for some reason, you listen to my fucking podcast, you don't believe me. Okay, weird take, but you can try it for 100 nights. And there's a 10 to 15 year warranty. So if something goes wrong with it somehow, or if you don't like it for 100 nights, you can send it right back. Absolutely no problem. They've got cooling features to help keep you cool during the literal night when it gets hot and you got them night sweats. Uh, there's just there's just way too many reasons to try this mattress. They've got 20 different kinds in their unique lineup. A bunch of them are award winning in terms of mattress, I don't know, competitions. I don't know how they judge that, but they've won a, the Lux Award. So mm. that's probably very, very uh, excuse me, the award-winning Lux Collection. I misspoke there. Let's pretend the award is called the Lux, too. They named it after that mattress because it's so good. Doesn't matter. All I'm saying is Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash official and use code... Ah, uh, I think they changed it. I can I can verify later. Helix Partner 20. I believe is what it is now. So specifically helixsleep.com slash official, but use code helixpartner20. I'm going to hope that's right. I'm going to think that's correct. The link will be in the description anyway. We'll put information down below. Yeah. If you want this to take advantage of this ad, you're smart enough to figure it out. But I'm, I'm reading what I got and I'm going to hope that that's correct. This is the best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. I can personally recommend it. Everyone I've ever met can recommend it. Helixsleep.com slash official. Use code HELIXPARTNER20. 20% 20 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. So now that you are soundly asleep, now that you are finally off in dreamland, I hate to break this to you, and it's not going to be Helix Sleep's fault. You might bolt awake in the night. It, it might happen. You might shoot up in your bed, in your brand new mattress, sweating, just terror, anxiety ridden. And you might say, oh my God, I just realized my internet's not encrypted. No! What the fuck have I been doing this whole time? Well, with ExpressVPN, you're not going to have that happen. You're going to sleep soundly throughout the night because ExpressVPN is going to encrypt your internet browsing to make sure that no looky-loos, no <laughs> people who shouldn't see it, are going to be able to peek in on your browsing data. But let's talk about the real stuff. Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's talk about why, honestly, 99% of you are going to want to use ExpressVPN. It's so you can change your location and watch streaming services, you big silly. Why would you pay for, let's say, Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu or Peacock or what have you and go, oh, I certainly do enjoy getting 25% of what they have available. What are you, silly? What are you, sick in the head? No. Use ExpressVPN, change to over 100 different locations, and get access to thousands of new TV shows no matter where your internet connection is coming from. They got Max, they got the BBC uh, web player, they got tons of different services this works with. Super simple, super easy to use. It's it, like, why not? Seriously. Just sign up for it, cl one click to activate, and you have just unlocked literally thousands of new pieces of entertainment. Oh, could I give an example? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so they've got for the, this is for US listeners. They've got Friends on the UK Netflix and they've got The Office on Canadian Netflix. So if you're if you use ExpressVPN, uh, you can you can go over there to the UK to watch Friends and then you can jot over to Canada to watch uh, The Office. So I'm so glad you mentioned The Office, Jackson, because if, if Reddit is anything to be believed, The Office is still the most popular television show ever made yep. ever and will never not be. Yep. So if you want to finally get in on those recycled memes, <laughs> you can go to Canada with ExpressVPN and watch The Office right now. Stop missing out on great TV and get thousands of new shows with ExpressVPN. We've got to give you all three extra months for free, but it's only going to be if you go to expressvpn.com slash official. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash official to get three extra months completely free. The end. Nice. Mm-hmm.
thank you. Have you guys seen the Billy Mitchell and Twin Galaxy settled in court? Oh, they did? A little I bit. Saw they settled. Is that good or yeah, bad? Yeah. <laughs> Neither. Uh, so from what no, I can gather. That's not satisfying. According to courthousenews.com. Well, you guys know the lawsuit where Billy Mitchell accused Twin Galaxies of defamation. Yeah. He said, no, my Pac-Man record is totally real. I'm the gamer of the century. And Twi- Twin Galaxies' <laughs> legal argument was, <clears throat> no, ah. And so they went to court <laughs> over this. And I guess they settled three months before this was actually supposed to be heard in court because both sides kind of just fucked up in court and st- uh, didn't follow the rules of the law to the point where... So Billy Mitchell was accused of fabricating evidence because apparently at some point he claimed that he got a plaque from Namco, which makes Pac-Man, saying that he's the gamer of the century. <laughs> And Twin Galaxies demanded to see the plaque and he just couldn't produce it. <laughs> so I guess he just, I, I don't know, I kept stalling and fabricating evidence. What does that have to but do with Twin anything? Galaxies lawyer. <laughs> this case well, was he a, has to like, prove that he's the gamer well, no, of the but year. Like, yeah, well, oh, I, I see. Guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, Twin Galaxies alleged that Twin Galaxies' former owner, I forget his name, but they're saying our former owner colluded with Billy Mitchell to create fake records, basically, for Pac-Man and other games so they could pump up the hype around the website so he could eventually sell it. So they were basically accusing the old owner of misconduct as well. Uh, So that was a whole drama. And both sides just completely fucked it up and fabricated evidence and couldn't do anything with it anymore until the judge, I guess, yelled at both of them. To the point that the Twin Galaxies attorney had to apologize uh, where he said his name is Tushrudian, admitted to the inappropriate behavior and asked the judge's forgiveness. He said, <laughs> I have debased myself before this court. <laughs> I have allowed my personal <laughs> emotions to clout my judgment. I was upset and frustrated. Uh, you never want to hear your attorney stand up and say, I have debased this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're fired. What's it called when a lawyer like loses his light debarred? Is that it? Something like that? Yeah, disbarred. disbarred. Yeah, he he loses he loses his lawyer license over some fucking defamation shit between Billy Mitchell and Twin <laughs> Galaxies. That'd be so fucking funny. Well, he was apparently reported to the state bar for discipline. So, from what I can gather, what he did was uh, he improperly contacted two witnesses in the case prompting Superior Court Judge Wendy Chang, who's overseeing the case, to consider referring him to the state bar for discipline. So I looked this up. Apparently, you technically are allowed to talk to the witnesses in a case if you're the attorney, but there's rules, right? So you're obviously not allowed to tamper with the witnesses or coach them into saying what you want them to say or intimidate them, especially if they have attorneys of their own. There's apparently like a whole new set of laws about contacting the witnesses directly. So along the way, somewhere he fucked up and then he had to just apologize and beg for mercy in the court. Do you have to like... And I guess that led... Do you have to like record record the meeting with the witness? Does it have to be like under super uh, supervision or something like that? No, I don't know. But I guess if the witness goes in and says like, "Yeah, I mean, he contacted me and said I should say so and so in court," yeah, maybe that's a fuck up. I don't know. Hmm. But I mean, the point is, the judge clearly just was fed up with both sides to the point that but they both said, "Fuck it, let's just settle." This is just getting too much. We're both embarrassing ourselves. That's so unsatisfying did. because so, it's very clear who's yeah, in the wrong. I here. know. <laughs> the ball, I, I know. It's so <laughs> fucking frustrating. <laughs> it's like why hand? Why hand? Uh, fucking Billy Mitchell the W through basically so well like he, he, oh, he should have lost like it's pretty obvious to anyone yep to be fair to be fair since he didn't win the case he did lose because now the uh, all the money that he paid to the firm I imagine isn't going to get reimbursed through a victory or anything yeah but it's, yeah. it's not as bad as him just yeah. outright losing outright losing yeah but he didn't win either. Mm. Take a peek at his track record, though, because that's how this the whole debacle just starts steamrolling, because he has all the shit going down. And he's like, you can't call me a cheater. I'll sue you. You can't say I cheated. I'll sue you. And then Twin Galaxies buckles under the pressure of everyone around and goes, you know what, Billy? We we have to reexamine our methods, and unfortunately, we just have to we have to say it's not legit. And he goes, you can't do that. I'll sue you. <laughs> you can't say that I'm a cheater. It's just like, oh, man, yeah. he's such a wild <laughs> character in all this. Such a goofy way to fumble it. But listen to this last paragraph here. 
Both Tashrudian, that's the Twin Galaxies attorney, and Mitchell appeared relieved, shaking hands in the hallway. <laughs> But no one appeared more pleased with the end of the case than Judge Chang, <laughs> who told the parties during the short hearing, quote, Oh my word, can I tell you how happy I am? <laughs> she was so fucking done with these people. <laughs> <They're> fucking nerds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Billy. I still, so just to briefly go back, I still think it's like Billy Mitchell should consider this a win. Like if someone held a loaded gun to me and like, flipped a coin and the choices were either shoot me in the head or shoot me in the foot and it ended up me uh, like getting shot in the foot I would still consider that a win even though my foot now hurts like he he's he oh, yeah. if I he mean, was meant to the- lose so if it's between him losing and like or, or him gracefully mm-hmm. like being you know part of that uh, equal equal outcome like I know which one he would prefer and so it still feels like a it's win it's even better than that though yeah it- it, it's not like Billy Mitchell was originally sued by Twin Galaxies first. This was Billy Mitchell's lawsuit. He sued for defamation first, I think. Yeah. Unless I got that backwards. No, that sounds and bright. then he got mm-hmm. counter suit. So he bluffed and he won. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> he said, yeah. I can prove I'm innocent. And then they just had to settle. Like, yeah, shit. Yeah. Our lawyer sucks. From an outside <laughs> perspective, if you knew nothing about the case, I mean, yeah, it would look like there was something fishy. <laughs> going on on a twin galaxies end if they had to settle for it so yeah this is yeah this is embarrassing how do they fuck how do they fuck it up that bad <laughs> should have been an open shut case to me though it's all for not which is the funniest thing let's imagine he won billy mitchell just it, like definitively he was like oh this is all bullshit whatever the, the internet really really doesn't forgive cheaters these days and the fact that there's all those videos and all this evidence, what is he going to do? Recover? Be a hero in the spotlight again? Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, the, Never. the legal case and the clowning that came from everything to do with that has propelled it into the spot, well, relative spotlight. So everyone who would know now knows that he's a cheater anyway, so it really hasn't done anything at the end of the day. It, to it's exactly. People. It's not going to reverse public opinion in the slightest. If he somehow was like, hey, I didn't cheat and here's evidence and now I'm suing them for defamation, then it could be a big messy like, oh, he's got some supporters and then some haters or whatever. But the fact that it's pretty overwhelmingly proved that he cheated. What is the point of all of this? He's not going to get his career back. I know. It's so fucking pathetic. Maybe we should be careful. Maybe maybe now that he's like got a little like a minor W from this, maybe now he's addicted to the feeling and he's gonna come after us. No, I I, I have point blank called this goober a cheater so many times and he has not <laughs> sued me yet because he's a goddamn coward. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, just wait until you hire a hobo for a lawyer, Charlie. And he'll find a way <laughs> yeah. to fuck it up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't fucking stand Billy Mitchell. I'm going to buy a cameo from him real quick and challenge him to a legal battle, actually. <laughs> you guys know he's on cameo, right? Of course, that makes sense. Oh, he's on cameo? Oh, buy a cameo that says I did cheat. No, he won't say that. He's got too much pride. No, he'd, he'd probably decline that one. Make it subtle. No, yeah, just, just send him the cameo. It doesn't matter if he says it or not. Just send him the cameo that says I challenge you to a legal battle. And at least then he's read it. <laughs> and then send your correspondence. Or play on his sympathy. Like, be like, hey, get him to say like, hey, I'm sorry you got cheated on by your girlfriend, but you'll be strong. Oh. I'm the, oh. the king of quarters. Just make him say the word cheat over and over and over again. <laughs> it's 60 bucks for a video from Billy Mitchell. Oh, he's got five star reviews. If he's doing it. Do you think it would be epic if we uh, commissioned a $50,000 animation that's just him cheating in, <laughs> in, uh, in uh, Pac-Man? Oh. They did that, Jackson. It was a movie called Pixels, you don't remember? Where they had a Billy yeah. Mitchell character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never saw that movie, thankfully. <laughs> it looked awful. Yeah. Billy's a... Billy's a bit of a genius with this move, though, because you can tell that. that everyone commissioning him... Well, no, you can tell everyone commissioning him doesn't know about this bullshit because they probably just don't care or follow like speedrun YouTubers. So he's probably getting all the people who only saw the documentary about him and know 
the King Kong sh- or the Donkey Kong shit. Anyone who's in st- into him would have to be into like you know video game competitions slash speed running. Exactly. And then they would have to. The know. only people that yeah. know his names are going. The only people that know his name are going to be gamers, yeah. like people that would absolutely like hard hear games. about his shit. Especially when you just Google Billy Mitchell, it's all about him being a fucking cheater. <laughs> like, there's no way they don't. That is know. true. Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> dude's got a perfect five star review score on Cameo and apparently has a bunch of takers who all are thanking him for doing a great job with no jokes whatsoever. <laughs> No, I, I know. I, I know that. But you have to remember, at the end of the day, people probably just don't care. They know he's a cheater, but don't also care because it's still very mm-hmm. yeah, fun yeah, yeah. to have Billy Mitchell mm-hmm. say things like, I'm Star Wars Council at Jedi Master and stuff. <laughs> I, think, I, I think it can be a swirling mix of both. You got people who don't know, people who don't care, people who just want Maybe. him to say things anyway and go, look, I got the cheater to say this. You know, like, it is probably <laughs> a lot of stuff people that going on there. But... him for cheating as well. I'm sure there's a few of those. Like, yeah, fuck, the yeah. people think he's cool now that he cheated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter as long as you get the end result. Get away with it. <laughs> oh, Charlie. Charlie, commission him to read the lawyer's statement of I've debased myself in front of this court. <laughs> oh. Oh. He might want to read that. Yeah, he'll yeah. probably do that on his Twitch stream. Yeah. Have you got so uh, when you said that when you Google it, it comes up with like the results for, for the lawsuit? I wanted to test the theory, so I Googled it. The first three results are Wikipedia, Billy Mitchell, and then in uh, parentheses, Gamer. <laughs> like that's the title of the fucking <laughs> Wikipedia article. Gamer of the century. Billy actually. Mitchell, Gamer. And then it's the next one is the Billy Mitchell Donkey Kong saga has ended in an embarrassing uh, lawsuit settling. And then the third one is. Oh. Another Wikipedia entry for Billy Mitchell, but this guy's like a fucking Chad. He's like a United States Army officer. <laughs> That's the true Billy Mitchell in my eyes. That's embarrassing for that family. <laughs> like their fucking war hero grandfather's Wikipedia page is right below Billy Mitchell Game. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just a fun little yeah. anecdote. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, what a goofy character. What else we got this week? Did you guys <laughs> did you guys see the fucking Suicide Squad game UI uh, released? Like the pictures of the screenshots I from the game? I, I saw that, but apparently the game's got great reviews and people are saying like that's not actually what the UI looks like. Have you seen that? What are you are you are you joking? No, I'm oh. super serious, which is why I was shocked. It's got great reviews right now from the people that have played it, and they're saying that that UI uh, image that's floating around isn't real. Really? That's so weird. I only saw yeah. negative impressions from people. Really? I only saw positive ones. Well, hang on. How does that go alongside the really big article that was thrown around the internet lately? That's I just found it on IGN, and it's titled Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Preview. We played it and didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, from IGN? Yeah, so IGN, out of the major outlets, is supposedly the only one that didn't like it. All the other ones were singing its praises, at least from what I saw from a Twitter thread, like, that compiled it. I definitely had a different, um, like, impression from what I saw from the outlets. I thought, like, the main Reddit post, like, all the outlets were pretty negative. So, I'm, I guess, somewhere in the middle, maybe? I'm not sure. I just know what I saw on Twitter. Or, uh, sorry, it's not like I know. I just saw it on Twitter that did a compilation of, like, what other outlets were saying about it, and IGN was by far the most negative. All right, well, regardless, it's probably a pretty competent, let's say, superhero live service game for as much as I, like, detest that genre at the moment. It's probably competent, right? Rocksteady's giant developer. They've been in the business for a while. They're good at what they do. But can we just talk about this fucking UI and how awful it is? It is, it is like, yeah. it is like one of those UIs you would have seen like 15 years ago as a meme, like those uh, Twitter meme posts where like the UI is just fucking Call of Duty and it's just everywhere, like shit everywhere mm-hmm. across the screen. It's fucking awful. It is the most detestable uh, UI I think I've seen in a long time. It's bars everywhere, words everywhere, there's information overload. Yeah. It's awful. Damage numbers with numbers for stats, with numbers for abilities, with number. I don't know. I I don't like the screen just filled with numbers at all time. You know, and having to process fucking data. I want things communicated visually, not oh here's a number. 
So now you know. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, it's one of the yeah, best. Examples. Yeah, nobody, nobody likes the UI. One of the best examples yeah. uh, I've seen of like good immersive UI is Dead Space. Like uh, Dead Space. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's a great one. The health, your health being uh, indicated through the lights on the back of Isaac's suit and stuff like that, and you can see your the spine. weapon count yeah. on 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 the ammo count on the weapons themselves. Fully immersive. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. where I thought UI would eventually lead to, but if it feels like it's gone the opposite direction with the advent of live service games where it's just information overload on the screen. They ha- just have, they have so much information that they yep. need to get to the player that it doesn't matter where it goes. Just put it on the fucking screen. They need to see this shit. And it's just, it's obnoxious. What, what you're describing Jackson is called diegetic UI. And it's a term for where the UI is baked into the narrative and design of the game. So Isaac's health meter in dead space being part of his suit is diegetic because it feels in universe. It's not like you're looking at a health bar. You're looking at a thing that functionally makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think I think like another example would maybe be Navi from Zelda, where it's a tutorial, but it's a character giving you advice mm. and telling you what, like how to do things, rather than the game bringing up a screen that says press X to jump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Another one, another good one that I can think of off yeah. the top of my head is Shadow of the Colossus has a very minimal. Uh, UI and, and you would have yes. a sword that would light up and point uh, point you in the direction that you were intended to go or you were meant to go to the next objective. There were no like you know HUD markers or map screen or anything like mm-hmm. that. It was very immersive, and I've always appreciated games that go the extra mile and effort and and try to incorporate information into the game itself as opposed to this. Um, and yeah, it's getting really bad. Like mm-hmm. there's been so many games now where it's just like, what what are you doing? How did this pass like a room of people? Like it is insane. Destiny started it probably, but Destiny yeah. also had a pretty good UI for what they were trying to do. This one just looks messy. Now, Jackson, let's follow up on Destiny because oh, I've Christ. been I've been doing my my once a month <laughs> check in <laughs> on Destiny just to see. <laughs> so I've never played Destiny, never never played the second one, never played either. But I've had these conversations with Jackson every now and then about how the game is just nose diving in quality. Yeah. Where's Where's Destiny at today? Jackson? I have never seen it nose dive this hard. I've been around since the very beginning for you know since 2013, 2014. Um, I've never seen a nosedive this hard. It is, this is, we're in perilous territories, gentlemen. This is the only time I've ever felt oh, no. like, wow, Destiny might, might not come out of it. <laughs> they might not come out of this. Sure, you've got the, <laughs> or, like, oh, the, no. the true diehards that are still just fucking addicted to it, like I was previously. Um, but through sobriety, I have, <laughs> I have seen the light. <laughs> it is, it is not looking good for Destiny overall. The game, the gameplay is just obnoxiously bad at the moment. Well, the game health is obnoxiously bad, I mean. Um, yeah, I, they're going to have to make drastic changes. The only, thing I, I, the only thing I see happening potentially is if either Final Shape is an absolute knockout success and extremely good and a return to form, which I don't think it will be. But if it is, then maybe. But by this point, from my perspective, I, even if that's the case, I'm just done with it because I'm so fucking sick of the cycle of wondering if it'll be good this time or if it'll be bad there's just been like too many uh, slides down the slippery slope into like the monetization being extraordinarily greedy and bad that i'm just like i'm I, i'm off the ride now i'm just done i don't know i don't i never thought the day would come but the cycle of destiny 2 is such a fucking shame because it has so much potential, potential. i know they it is unrealized and it is tragic and they've openly stated that it's better to under deliver than over promise or some shit like that like they're afraid of over delivering because yeah. it sets the expectations too high so they don't even fucking try that fucking that gdc mm-hmm. conference that they did where their their lead uh, one of their lead whatever producers or whatever came out and gave that speech and that was the entire mantra was like it's fine to release broken games because we need to be fast and we'll fix it eventually maybe and also the audience is <laughs> fucking whipped into like submission and they, and they don't care and uh yeah we don't need to put effort in because then it sets up expectations that we might deliver something good it's like they said this they said this openly like sure it was at like a developer conference or whatever i guess they weren't expecting their consumers to see it but still you went out there so brazenly and said this shit like that had to pass like rooms of people like approving that message and it still went out there in public and they thought that was okay 
It is so, f- it, it just shows how, like, where their mindset is. They think that that is okay. That's why I'm like, I'm completely like, I don't have faith in them. I don't think Bungie. <laughs> I don't think Bungie is a good developer anymore. The Bungie that I know and love died many years ago. What happened to the game I love meme, yeah? You know what I used to... Yeah, I used to uh, be on the camp of like, oh, Destiny's only bad because Activision is producing it. And people still have that kind of cope and shit. But the game got so much fucking worse when they went indie. When they like removed themselves from Activision and brought out their independence. The game became so much more worse. It became filled to the brim with microtransactions on top of shitty like developer practices and such. Anti-consumer practices. And uh, people still blame Activision. Now people are blaming Sony and stuff. It's not. It, 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 if you if you constantly smell like shit, what what's the fucking saying? If you constantly smell like shit, check under your shoes. Like it, it's it's fucking obvious where the problem is. It's Bungie. They are so fucking greedy. They're the worst. Fuck. Oh man, Andrew, why do you have to bring this up? I'm gonna need to go to sleep after this. You're welcome. I'm gonna be fucking sweating in my bed. Well, here, I'll I'll save you then. How about we talk about another game that is nose dove in a huge fashion? Overwatch Two. Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that didn't even that, that didn't even take off. Really, <laughs> they went in the air. <laughs> they, well, yeah, that's true. It n- never left the the well, launch pad. Hang on, if they're if they're going down from where they were before, I'm I want to hear this. That sounds impressive to do. <laughs> Three days ago, they released. Well, I don't know if this is even fully official, but it seems like it's like a leak, or maybe they are fully announcing it. I'm not entirely sure. But they announced that all heroes are set to receive self heal passive in season nine. Apparently. So in Overwatch, that's a big deal because right now the only things that self heal, I think, are the healers. I, I'm pretty sure they're still the only ones. And healing is such a crucial part. Support is so huge because that's the main way DPS and tanks heal to stay alive. Outside of that, you can get like health packs. But everything getting self or everything getting a self heal passive completely throws the game into into disarray. So the entire community <laughs> erupted over it, talking about how this is probably the single worst change that could have ever been like even put on the drawing board so i've just been reading a lot of the meltdown and it is wild how out of touch the overwatch devs are with what the player base wants it's crazy so they added self-heal to every everything is the main contention point that it devalues healers like support oh the main contention is like everything changes with this so like for example flanking as a dps you can do that completely risk free now because you can get in out. Just wait for your shit to come back. Depending on like how quickly it heals, everything changes. Like the whole game changes in a worse way. Hmm. Like you no longer need it your support. Throws. To- yeah. It, it, sorry, I didn't mean no, to interrupt, didn't. but it completely throws the game balance and design out of loop. Like it, it completely devalues the balance of team composition you're supposed to have. And now new strategies are just going to not care about what are considered foundational parts of the team. I don't understand why these video game companies take these giant sweeping changes and they don't like just do it on like a test server or something like they, they do an experimental build just to see what the audience actually thinks, like give them the option Mm -hmm. to play it the way that it currently is. And then give them the option to just experiment and try like that. That would be fine, but they make these giant sweeping changes instead it, it so another another big thing that this does is it kind of reduces the support role into mainly going for dps because you're going to get far more value out of that when everyone can heal than if you have your supports heal you if everyone can just passively heal just have your dps flank and then just get out of line of sight wait a little bit while your support is focused on tanks and dps like it's super counterintuitive to what the balancing of the game is supposed to be plus there's still going to mm. be health packs i'm pretty sure so it's just you don't really need your healers when you play DPS anymore. It's it's yep. ridiculous. Isn't Soul Soul's just seventy six? I can't one of imagine his main abilities. The ability to self heal. What happens there? He yeah. Soldier seventy six has a self heal. There's other DPS that have ways of healing uh, themselves oh, too. Yeah. So like it's it, there's so much sustain now with that. It's crazy. Why mm-hmm. did they? Why, did they make an explanation of why? Why they made this change? <laughs> no. No, not from what I can see. I, I don't think they've made like a full in-depth breakdown on what they were smoking when they came up with this one. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say, Andrew? The Yeah, the one that I always relate it to, because I think it's the, the more optimal version of that game design is Team Fortress 2. And one of the big mechanics of Team Fortress 2 is if you're playing as the soldier or demo man, you can get ridiculous mobility with rocket jumping, but it costs health. 
so you can get to great vantage points and move around the map like crazy, but you can only do it a certain number of times, and if you get in a good position, unless you know how to really do it or it works optimally, you're going to be at lower health. So it's a risk, mm. and that makes the medic better, because a lot of times to help charge up stuff and you know, work with the medic, they'll intentionally damage themselves. And then the medic goes, okay, I'll heal them, get the overheal, get my overcharge boost, all that stuff. So I just keep thinking, if you take Overwatch, which is very clearly stealing so many ideas from TF2 to try to make a class-based shooter, and you throw fucking overheal into these mechanics, I, I don't know how the game's supposed to work. I, I don't know how you're supposed to have any form of balance between classes when you add this. Doesn't make any sense. The whole game is just so unfun. <laughs> like it's in such an <laughs> unfun state. It's crazy. I haven't played in about two months. Like when my friends and I were actively grinding it. But man, it is. It has gone so downhill, even across just a couple months. I'm reading the Steam reviews right now, and they are all overwhelmingly negative. And all the top reviews are just talking about you should watch porn from this game instead of playing it. Go to Rule 34 and search the characters. Don't actually play the game. One of the <laughs> top liked reviews, it has no text, and all it is is a link to download Team Fortress 2. <laughs> and that's it. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right back. I'm going to go throw up. <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh, no. Oh, look what you did, Andrew. <laughs> Fucking talking about Destiny. Is Overwatch 2 that bad, Jackson? I'm sorry. It's Destiny. You had to bring it up, Andrew. You know how his stomach yeah. gets when we talk about Destiny. <sighs> I should have been more sensitive with Jackson's Destiny-itis. I'm sorry. Ty, I think it's your turn. I think the three of us except you had a topic. Am I right? <laughs> I think you got that backwards, but sure. <laughs> he brought up the animation as well, and Billy Mitchell. Yeah, I'm done. Um, I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't really have anything else. What else happened? Um, planes are crashing. Discord got a bunch of layoffs. And people have been on a meme spree, basically recording themselves getting laid off in real time. Have you guys seen all this? <laughs> I have not. So many I did. Fucking layoffs one, of, one of their employees made a, made a reaction image that copies the old Discord style about like, oopsie doodles, you've been laid off. Well, Springle's oh, yeah, here yeah. to help you. Put a pep in your step. Can you find it? It's really funny. Yeah, I can find it and I can put a link in our chat just for good measure. It says, Hi, Kevin. My name is Springles. Thanks for opening the email. It was getting a bit cramped, Kimpa. I have some news about your employment status. Without further ado, let's crack open the cookie and see what it says. And then it's a fortune cookie cracked open. It says, Pack your bags, Jimbo. Aw, poopy <laughs> farts. It looks like you didn't make the cuts. I'm so sorry <laughs> to present this news to you. We thank you for your services. Goodbye. And then, I mean, this is a joke <laughs> meme that somebody made about getting fired because they were pissed off, obviously. But this spawned a whole genre on TikTok now where people just film themselves getting into HR calls on Zoom and they put the camera off uh, camera, I guess. Their own phone cameras off camera while they're in the Zoom meeting as they're getting laid off. And yeah, Discord laid off 17% of their staff, which is 170 people. Which means, I think, unless I'm an idiot, which I am, but thousands of people used to work at Discord for what? Yeah, that's always the question when it comes to these big tech giants. For what? Why all of those employees? Mm -hmm. Like, what are they actively doing for Discord? I'm always super curious. It's just so much bloat. There is so much bloat. Yeah. And one of these girls that made one of the videos where she gets laid off, I looked at her profile on Twitter and it just said, um, this, at Discord product. I don't wonder, like, what the fuck does that mean? Products. Like, what do you do at Discord? Product. What does that mean? Business. What does that mean? Profits. What does that mean? Stuff. Like, what do you actually do, right? You never get an answer with these people. And then you scroll down their profile and there's just selfies of them in various outfits and getting lattes. It's no wonder you're getting fired because you have a fake email job. We talked about it on the show, right? Where that woman who worked at a giant tech sort of company posted on TikTok her like day in the life of my job yeah, that's and a whole it was genre. literally nothing but yes. yeah it was it was nothing but I wake up I go to the coffee shop and get a latte on the company credit card then I go to my desk and I read emails then we have a meeting where she's like I just take notes and that's all I do then I take a yoga break I go to the break room and play pool with the boys yeah. And, and she actively showed she just does literally nothing all day. 
<laughs> and then it's always happy hour. All of those videos, the genre always ends oh, yeah, with happy, happy hour. Happy hour, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Bar hopping. There's this beautiful place in New York that makes the best tacos. It's like, okay, but what do you actually do? And the answer is apparently <laughs> nothing because they just get fired from Discord. And I truly hope back what, a year or two ago when my fucking account got banned, I hope you were affected. I hope you got kicked from the company. I win. <laughs> Dickheads. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what Discord oh, is up geez. to. They also have a safety tarot now. Have you guys seen this? How do you say that word? Tarot? Tarot? The cards? The oh, tarot. Tarot. Terror, tarot. Tarot. Okay. Tarot. Yeah. No, no, they're, they're tarot. Tarot. Tarot cards. Tarot. Yeah. Oh my god, tarot. Tarot. Uh, tarot. Yes. Tarot. Tarot. Okay, whatever. I have an accent. Fuck you. Anyway, click the link. <laughs> they have a safety tarot now where you can click these little... I guess star signs or whatever they're supposed to be, the cards, and then it gives you a little message on safety. For instance, the card the Empress says, encourage kindness in creative spaces so everyone can relax and grow. Be mindful of the power of your words when commenting on other people's creative work. It takes a lot of bravery to be vulnerable with strangers. So I think this is what those people used to do that got laid off with like just empty jobs, the fake email jobs. I think they just do this sort of stuff. They write these cards. So, obviously, if this is filling the void of a job, I get that that's the purpose of it. But who is this for? Who looks at really Discord and says, oh, boy, do I want the tarot card set from Discord? I have no idea. I mean, can't you just... Yeah. I, I get the gist. It's nice to teach kids, like, okay, be nice and don't click links, links you don't know. But can't you just say that? Why do you have to package it in this new age... Uh, star sign hippie bullshit. It's, cute. it's way more effective to package it as merch people would give a shit about. You just make a shirt with the Discord logo and come up with a positive slogan like "Be nice to each other" or "Discord, hang out with your friends." Like it, you could do better than that. That's your job, your marketing. But who in the fuck though is gonna buy a safety tarot card pack from Discord? <laughs> oh, they're not selling it. I think it's just an online thing. Yeah, if it's not just being sold, the trickster. It's just a cute way of packaging it, like you said. Um, it, it reminds me, you know, what it reminds me of, in old school RuneScape or, uh, I guess, original RuneScape. That you used to, there used to be a quest that you would have to go on uh, down into the safety dungeon to learn about like account safety, and it was this cool, it was this cool quest line where you would answer like questions about how to like secure your account. You kill monsters and stuff, and you try to get to the end of the dungeon. And if you did, you got some, you got some cool like loot, like you got some um, boots, like rainbow boots or stuff like that. And I, I thought that, <laughs> I thought that was a really cool way of like teaching players how to protect their accounts didn't work of course runescape is still like the fucking uh what, what do you call it like ground zero of accounts scams and and like uh trading trading account info and stuff like that but it's still uh, i thought it was a cool way of doing the real it. quick i mm-hmm. correct ourselves they are selling the discord tarot cards for 25 bucks yeah, you can get it, them well physically <laughs> discordmerch.com that's where i was reading all yeah, this physically. yeah it's real merch also if you're a diehard wumpus fan calling all <laughs> diehard wumpus fans if you go to discordmerch.com right now you can get a custom made stream deck or broadcast microphone made out of wumpus's face so Aww. go check that out that's so cute yeah. Wait, so was what Wumpus? I don't know if you guys talked about it while it's gone, but was Wumpus um, fired as part of the layoffs? Or Wump- Wumpus was let go a while back. <laughs> if you yeah, yeah, if you pay attention to like Discord lore, they actually make a statement about like they used to have a mascot named Wumpus. Well, they apparently still do because you can buy the Wumpus microphone right now on Discord. Yeah, see, they're still Merch. fucking trotting him out. Isn't that him in the fucking safety tarot cards, or is that someone else? Uh, the pig, the purple pig. Yeah, thingy. I thought that yeah. was Wumpus. Is that In the end, there. That's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. They also have the sauce. No, he's still dog. around. Well, then what? What the fuck? He's he's been fired, but they're still fucking trotting out his image. That's fucked up. That's got to be against labor laws or something. Well, someone drew him, so they really got to get their money's worth, right? 
I guess. They can't just retire him for good, I guess. I don't know. All I know is they really put him in the back room when like COVID happened and everybody went on Zoom. And I guess the higher ups at Discord were like, oh shit, we gotta rebrand and make this more like quick execute one palatable to adults. Yeah, execute Wampus. Get him off the front page of our app, for God's sake. Make it look like an adult app instead of this gamer cringe shit. And I, I don't think Wampus I don't think Wampus is going anywhere. One of the so this is official, by the way. I just looked at the FAQ. This merch site is the official merch of Discord. <laughs> One of the brands under them is called Camp Wampus. <laughs> and it's like summer camp themed stuff. Do not stuff ever focused send your fucking Wampus. kids to Camp Wampus. That's that's a bad idea. <laughs> no one ever comes back from Camp Wampus without being a gamer. Camp Wampus is the place where dreams are made. <laughs> I'd say send your kids there ASAP. And is Camp Wampus where they send all the undesirables on Discord? Just get rid of them. Oh, it's like a re-education camp for Discord employees <laughs> yeah, or something. It's- it, it's not the fun kind of camp. It's where all the fired employees are right now. <laughs> that would be the worst. Like, you guys know how when you violate copyright on YouTube, they make you take this little bad boy quiz like, huh, tell us, A, B, C, D, which one of these violates copyright? And they make you take a whole class and quiz. Yeah. Until you get your oh, fucking God. channel back. They literally lecture you. They should do that with Discord. Yeah. Who's the best mascot? Right cringy. Yeah. Which one of these is the most appropriate? Yikes. Oof, my dude, not a good look. A, B, C, D. <laughs> How much should you spend on your fursuit? The minimum answer is $10,000. <laughs> mm-hmm. Otherwise, everyone will laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh, well. Discord is still cringe, is the message. And people are getting fired, so. Did you guys uh, have anything else that you want to wrap there? We can wrap. I don't. Unless you do, Jackson. No, I don't. Um, I did want to sh- shout out the Apology Archive, though. I did, I, I'm assuming you guys saw that he made mm-hmm. a video <laughs> shouting us out for talking about him in the um, Yandere Devs video that we did last week. Uh, he, he seems like a, a sweet guy, so shout out to you. That was, that was very funny. Yes. He's almost Thank at 1,000 subscribers. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Apology Archive. However... I did notice that he had to take down his Yandere dev apology. Yeah, I noticed video, that too. Which did, was there any mention of why? You have to put it why? back up. You have to be stubborn. No, I assume maybe copyright. Yeah, I'm assuming Yandere dev may have copyright struck him because it doesn't seem like he would have just taken it down. Mm, still, find a way to put it back up. This is a matter of honor now. Yeah, apology archive. <laughs> make a rumble or plus it would be fucking incredible now that the whole billy mitchell shit has ended if the next lawsuit we see is between yandere dev and apology archive or something like that for defamation <laughs> god that'd be incredible we'll get you a better lawyer <laughs> no the same lawyer <laughs> i think he could represent himself and do better <laughs> it has to be the same lawyer he has to he has to uh, make a comeback <laughs> no we're, that guy we're gonna hire for yandere dev Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for listening and hanging out. Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes, early access to content. And we got Red Thread, Criminally Stupid on the YouTube channel. Both great series that you should watch for additional entertainment. We're putting out more content than we've ever put out. So make sure you go watch it. The last episode of Red Thread was about Mothman, and it was a lot of fun. We found out that Mothman is absolutely caked up, giant butt cheeks. So if you want to learn more about what uh, what Mothman's packing below the belt, you can go watch that video. Other than that, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.